Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now, when you're young, you really don't give much thought about your health simply because you're healthy, right? You don't think about the consequences or your future. This is because you have the right hormones and thus you feel unstoppable. Unfortunately, the damage you do to your body when you're young eventually shows up later on in life and sometimes it can be too late to fix or reverse. For example, young people are generally unaware that poor blood flow and circulation can be very dangerous to your health because the symptoms just aren't obvious while they're young. Later on when they're older and they regularly see and feel these negative symptoms, they'll do anything and everything to fix it. Thus, an ounce of prevention really does go a long way. So today I'm going to quickly discuss three little known causes of poor blood flow and circulation. The first is binge drinking. Now studies have shown that drinking a glass of alcohol, you know, a day can help the heart function better. It also helps maintain balance and the right proportions of fat in the blood and helps lower your chances of developing blood clots and blocked arteries. However, science also reveals that more than two drinks of alcohol a day can harm the heart. So how can this be? Basically, large amounts of alcohol can affect how the heart works. You see, if the heart isn't pumping blood throughout your body effectively, other organs may suffer from the lack of oxygen or nutrients. Now, if the person drinking has clogged blood vessels, the heart has to work even harder. Now, studies on middle age and older people resulted in finding linking binge drinking to a higher risk of cardiovascular diseases such as stroke, uh, sudden cardiac death, and heart attacks. Now, binge drinking may also lead to hardening of your arteries, which further increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. Obviously, binge drinking should be avoided in order to have a healthy blood circulation. Typically, binge drinking happens in groups, so try to limit the time you spend with your friends who tend to be binge drinkers. The second problem is sitting for too long, especially with bad posture. Now, while brief periods of sitting here and there is natural, long periods of sitting day in and day out can seriously impact your health and shorten your life. Excess of sitting is bad for your back and is one of the causes of poor circulation. Unfortunately, most of us are sitting even more these days simply because, you know, of the computers. And with prolonged sitting comes negative damages to your organs. For the heart, in sitting, you know, in the sitting position, blood flow slows down and the muscles don't burn enough fat, which permits fatty acids to clog in the heart much faster. As far as your pancreas, the body's ability to properly respond to insulin is badly affected by just sitting one day of prolonged sitting, right? So this leads uh, the pancreas to produce more insulin and this causes uh, low energy levels, fat gain, and diabetes. And then also colon cancer. Excessive sitting may increase your risk of colon, breast, and endometrial cancers. So how can you avoid sitting for too long? Set an alarm on your computer or watch or phone and basically try to stand up every 30 to 60 minutes. Move around, stretch, grab a glass of water, just do something physical. If possible, go outside for a quick 10-minute walk. Or instead of sitting and talking on your cell phone, walk around. I mean, there are no cords, so you have no limits. And number three, high intake of salt. A high intake of sodium is a more common cause of poor circulation. For clarity, I'm referring to regular table salt or salt found in most packaged foods. Not so much uh, with the more natural salts such as Himalayan or Celtic sea salt. Now, sodium is a mineral and an electrolyte that's crucial for your body to function well. And according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, around 90% of sodium you, that you get comes from salt. Now, sodium assists in controlling blood volume and blood pressure. However, your circulatory health may suffer if you get too much of it. A high sodium diet is linked to hypertension. And according to the CDC, if sodium rises, blood pressure rises too. And the Dietary Guidelines uh, for Americans 2010 recommends that you limit salt intake to less than 2,300 milligrams daily. And you should not consume more than 1,500 milligrams daily if you're over the age of 50, African American, or health, health conditions such as um, high blood pressure, diabetes, or just chronic kidney disease. Now, processed foods and restaurant foods are full of salt, so don't eat these foods if you can, and you'll be able to avoid and eliminate the majority of your salt intake. You can also add in potassium-rich foods or just supplements to counteract and balance the sodium intake. So to sum it up, avoid binge drinking, sitting for too long with bad posture, and remember to cut down the intake of salt in your diet to improve your blood flow and circulation. 
Add in some daily exercise and the right supplements and you'll see dramatic improvements in your blood flow, energy levels, and overall health. Well, I hope this video was helpful and gave you more clarity. If you like more information about this or similar topics, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'll be making more highly researched videos aimed at keeping your entire body and mind healthy so you can look and feel young. And if you think someone else might benefit from today's topic, please share the health with email or social media, text, or just any way to help someone you care about. And if you'd like to discover how I dramatically improve my dad's blood flow and circulation in just less than 30 days without the use of harmful prescription drugs or following a restrictive diet, please visit the link in the description area below for additional information and helpful tips. As always, thanks for listening and have a happy and healthy day.